here we have a Nintendo Switch Lite that came in for custom road charging port has damaged contacts this is a Nintendo Switch Lite this is not the regular one not the OLED the light the cheapest one why is the customer fixing this maybe because of data I have not seen such a mangled USB-C connector before look at this how does this happen I can tell you how it happens from experience you want to put that Nintendo switch on the docking station and it's not going in right it's being stubborn so you want to teach it a lesson and you shove it all the way in things get damaged or you want to put the cable in the cable is not going in properly of course you want to teach it a lesson so it doesn't do this again and you shove the cable all the way in with force and you end up damaging that connector I want to unplug a USB cable from my desktop a simple cable that you should be able to plug in and out so easy the cable is stuck I'm trying to do it with one hand and I'm not able to so what do I do I snatch that cable and at the same time my hand goes all the way I slap three or four of my kids at the same time what can you do I'm trying to unplug that cable it's not coming out do not do this be gentle the cable is not going in relax take a deep breath chill and figure out why the cable is not going in but do not shove that cable in because you're gonna end up with mangled pins like you see so let's go ahead and replace that connector when was the last time I made a video about a Nintendo switch I work on Nintendo switches every single day I have tons of videos I overdid the videos on Nintendo switches so I do not do it often but let's do it today and just to remind everyone that Nintendo switch or switches whether it's the light OLED or the regular one they fail every single day USB-C connector P13 chip M92 chip BQ chip they fail every single day so how are we gonna approach this repair 101 ways you can do this we're gonna start by applying NF dot flux which is currently out of stock and I told you that we should it's currently in production we should have the flux back in stock probably early to mid December I put an incentive on our website right now if you pre-order now you're gonna get 20% additional discount on top of the already discounted wholesale prices that you get when you buy in quantities whether it's 5 15 25 even 20% 20 off if you buy one syringe take advantage of this because we never discount anything on our website everything is already calculated in the price where we still make profit and whatever price you see on the site is what you get but since the flux is currently out of stock we want to give you an incentive so you can pre-order now rather than wait three to four weeks we get the orders we benefit and you also get the 20 percent discount and you benefit win-win we're already offering how much 20 percent discount if you buy in quantities and now an additional 20 percent and that's only if you buy I think 20 or 25 syringes but if you want to go for five you get 10% discount and additional 20% discount because the flux is on pre-order right now right so we're gonna apply low melt solder and where's my fume extractor why isn't it on yesterday I went to the doctor to do a general test and it's a new doctor I'm going to and he asked me what I do for a living I told him I fix electronics and I told him just a general checkup blood test he asked me if there's anything I'm concerned about I told him no just a general test check everything from cholesterol vitamin D make sure everything is good in the blood he asked how I feel I told him I'm in the best shape of my life right now I work out I eat right I told him one thing I would like you to do is I solder a lot maybe check lead in my blood see if I have any 
unhealthy levels of lead. I never checked for that before. So he said, okay. I do not know the results yet, but he said he'll call in about one or two weeks. I use a fume extractor all the time. I wear gloves all the time and a lot of viewers ask why sometimes you wear gloves and other times you do not wear gloves. My answer is you should wear gloves all the time when handling solder, low melt solder or flux. The skin is gonna absorb whatever you touch. You put lotion on your hand, the skin is gonna absorb it. You touch something toxic, the body is gonna absorb it. So when you are handling solder, or low melt solder that has lead in it, the body is gonna absorb it. Maybe in such small quantities that it's not gonna matter, but it can add up. So I'm always wearing gloves, unless I forget to wear gloves or unless I do not have gloves next to me or maybe out of stock. But 100%, you should always wear gloves. Fume extractor all the time, 100%. Okay, so I applied low melt solder all across. Now all we need to do is apply heat. And then we can easily desolder that connector. Can you do it without applying low melt solder? For this board, yes. It's not a very thick board, but the way I do it is a lot easier. And it makes my job easier when I want to desolder solder from the holes. Now we're gonna grab NF dot sucker for all the suckers out there and we're gonna suck solder from the holes. So I still have one more to go. And we're done. Right? Perfect. Now what we're gonna do is pre-apply solder on those pads. And we're gonna reflow the USB-C connector on those pads. I'm using the wrong tip. This is a bigger tip than what I should be using, but that's what I have on the soldering iron right now, and it's not a big deal. But usually I use NF.mini to apply solder here. Okay, it's not a big deal. Anti-glare light, and look at that beauty. The beauty of the anti-glare light. All right, so now we're going to apply heat from the bottom. And you can tell how the hole here aligns. And we're going to push down. This column here, we can see the column of pins, but the one under the connector, we cannot see. But once this column melts, we see solder melting here. We know that the column under also melted. And we're all good. Keep holding. Keep holding. A robber comes in. Let him take everything that he wants. Keep holding. Wife calls, whoever calls. Do not pick up. Keep holding. Okay, now it's safe to pull out. 
you can follow that robber if you want, call whoever you want to call, but you know that you're not going to do this job again, one time. Do it right the first time. We're done. All we have to do is solder the legs from the bottom. Give it the big bus to reassemble and test. Maybe I'll do a quick checkup on the M92 chip, the BQ chip, a quick visual inspection. Maybe a short circuit on this connector caused something else to fail. Who knows? Maybe this would go from something that we thought would be fixable to something that cannot be fixed or not practical to fix or not economical to fix. So we cannot say it's a done deal until we try it. And of that flux. And if you have not used this flux, you are missing out. This is our go-to and what we use every single day. We used to use the MTech 559 flux, but after this, we have not went back. 430 degrees Celsius or below. Do not go above because you're going to end up testing the limitations of the flux. My soldering iron is almost always at 420 or 430. It's at 420 right now. I do not need to have a very high temperature for this board. Even 380 or 390 will work for this board. But I'm always at 420. Always. We're going to go over those joints one more time. I just want to apply the solder for now. And we'll do a second pass where we make everything look better than factory. And we are done. We are 100% done. And the result? better than factory, right? That's the end result. Every soldering job that we do, it has to pass the better than factory inspection. And it's always done better than factory the first time. We do not go back and forth. We're gonna check on those pins, make sure all the pins are good. And where's my very fine probe? Right here. Solid, solid, solid. And we're gonna say solid for every single pin because we only have few pins. And all the pins are 100% solid. You can buy that probe off our site. They come in twos, a straight and a bent. Right, so while added, let's go ahead and measure, test to make sure our M92 is good. We're gonna measure for a short circuit nearby, a common fault on Nintendo switches. We'll do the same thing for the BQ chip also. We're gonna measure here. We do not wanna see a short or hear a short. Multimeter on, diode mode, and we're gonna measure here. We're gonna measure here, measure here. Measure here, and we're all good. Jump over to our BQ chip. No short, no short, no short. Okay, so I did not have a battery next to me. Maybe we can test it before I give it to him to make sure the board is working. The battery is connected. And I'm using the charging station I have. I want to see the charging station jump from 12 volts to 9 volts. Once I see the switch happen, I know the console is working. So I'm using the app to focus and zoom in. 
I have the Sony Alpha 7 4. Right, so let's plug in the cable. And I want to look at this. It went directly to 9.1 volts at 1.1 amp. Usually it starts at 12 volts, 0 0.6 amps. It takes a few seconds, then it jumps back down to 9.1 volts at 1 amp. And that's what we want to see. And now we see that it went directly to 9.1 volts at 1.1 amps. That's amazing. The board is working. I'm going to hand the board over to Big Bus to reassemble and test. Make sure everything is working good. Invoice and mail it back to the customer.